What's up, everybody? Welcome to another Mashing Journey Whiskey Club live selection tonight. What's on the menu? Woodenville. Can we possibly find something better than the Iceman and Maverick? Oh, I don't know. But we're going to find out. What, what, what do you think, Scotty? That's a tough one. I told you my answer before. I'm like, I don't think so. Even if it is, I refuse to admit to it being better. So I'm biased. I'm biased in the deal. So we'll, we'll see. But this, this will be a fun one. Woodenville is doing some pretty incredible things. So pretty excited for this again. So well, I want to welcome uh, everyone that's watching in to, to hang out tonight with us as we go through the selection. Uh, we have four uh, samples uh, from Woodenville. Uh, we have our buddy up in the right-hand corner there, Garrett Epling, is here. He is uh, from Woodenville. He's going to be talking uh, through the uh, not only samples with us, but telling us about what's going on at Woodenville these days. It's been about a year since uh, Scott and I selected uh, Iceman and Maverick, so we want to know what's new, what's going on, what they're coming out with. Um, and then once uh, we do that, we're going to be joined by all these wonderful patrons. We have Michelle, Jimmy, Blind Squirrel is here. Rob Zilla, Rob Shields, and the Woodenville. The guy basically works there. It's Joseph Brazzers. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows his Woodenville, it's him. So, uh, uh, Garrett, yeah, why don't you come on? Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm I'm privileged to be here, and this is uh, this is absolutely the favorite part of my job. Uh, walking through these barrels is a uh, is a real treat. I'm excited about the ones we have in front of us today. A little bit about Woodenville for anybody watching who might not have seen last year. Uh, we're a grain to glass distillery up here in the Northwest out of Woodenville, Washington. Uh, all the grains we use to make our whiskeys are grown locally here in the state of Washington by a fourth generation family farm, the Omlin family farm in Quincy. So real tight circle of production. What we're doing is unique in the whiskey community and uh, we're really proud of it. This has all been aged for five years in heavily charred barrels. Uh, with toasted heads use a char number four so we get those uh nice caramelized sugars out of the out of the barrels so it gives a little bit of sweetness um we do have a mash bill of 72 percent corn 22 percent rye six percent malted barley so we'll get a little bit of sweetness on the nose in each one of these that's signature for woodenville whiskey and a little bit of uh, sweetness on the front of the palate but this is a high rye style bourbon obviously at 22 percent so we're going to get a little bit of spice a little bit of complexity What's new at the distillery, uh, since we talked last year, we're expanding our distillery right now. Um, my office is currently uh, rattled with jackhammers and covered in dust. Uh, we're putting in <laughs> four additional 9,000 gallon fermenters. Woo. Which we're about to be ramping up to 24 hour production, which is a pretty cool space for us to be in. Um, wow, how many, uh, how many barrels a day uh, once it's all said and done, you guys looking to fill? So at the moment, we're going to be looking at about 50 to 55 barrels a day. So for us, when, if you followed us in our journey 12 years in, that's massive. Uh, when we were uh, when we first moved into the space that we're at our distillery location now in Woodenville in 2014, uh, we were making about nine barrels a day. So uh, in a short amount of time, we really well, just escalated. a little bit more whiskey you're making for a little bit, just a little, just bit. A little <laughs> bit, <That's> right? <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we're, hopefully we're you find yourself a hopefully you find yourself a nice comfortable cot. Doesn't sound like you're going to be leaving the distillery anytime soon. <laughs> we have a hammock that'll stretch out right between the Perfect. catwalks, and uh, I just got to make sure that 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 white dog's coming off the way we want it, right? Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the most exciting thing we have going on. We're still, uh, you'll find us in 24 different states. We're in 26 markets. And uh, thanks for people like yourselves, uh, support and discovery of, of this uh, delicious whiskey. I came into this project as a consumer, so uh, I had a pretty heavy bias coming into it. But uh, I'm absolutely in love with what Woodenville is doing. We're not cutting any corners. So as these expansions happen, it's the same traditional route. We're doing small batch distillation cutting these uh, batches by hand and uh, and and doing it all the same way we've done since day one. So it's pretty exciting to see the the growth and the transitions we're making. And I, I hope you like these whiskeys today. I think we might give those uh, those last two a run for their money. So are you guys are you guys still aging your stuff like on the other side of was it the other side of the mountain where there's a little bit more climate variability rather than on site? You guys still doing that? One thousand percent. Absolutely. Wow. So the, the same farm that our grains are grown on that that fourth generation family farm that I was talking about. Yeah. That's where we age. All of our rickhouses live out there. So they are uh, there. There's about one hundred and twenty five degree Fahrenheit temperature fluctuation between the uh, the highs in the summertime and the lows in the winter. That wow. really does give us a lot of contrast. If you think about it, uh, the way things expand and contract in the heat, when we go through those seasons with that variant, it almost acts like a manual pump. 
So as those barrels expand in the summertime, it pushes all the juice into the wood. As they contrast in the wintertime, it pushes it out. So after our product goes through five summers and five seasons of that, that transitional expansion and contraction, we ended up with a really, really complex and uh, influential uh, burial maturity, much more than we could get from a, a more tempered environment. I always it's found that, good. yeah, I always found that really interesting when I first read your story. I'm like, wow, these guys are no joke. They're actually trucking their barrels back over the mountain where they can get some good variability because that's like we talked about before, you know, what about 80% of that flavor, 60, 80% is going to come out of that barrel and you want, you want as much temperature fluctuation as you can, and you're going to go where you can go to find it. So, uh, Absolutely. yeah, Absolutely. when I, when I read that, I'm like, okay, these, these guys know they're, 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 they got the smarts. So, yeah, I mean, and, and, and the extra expense to have to haul, you know, those barrels that, that far to, to, you know, a whole different location like that. That's, I mean, that's some commitment. That's for sure. So. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, there. Speaking of expense, you know, there's uh, the barrels that we use. Uh, speaking of, that's what we're all here for. Uh, we work with the Independent Save Company. Uh, they're they're they have a location in Kentucky and in Missouri. We go from the Missouri location. So mm -hmm. these staves that we're using, it's all you know responsibly harvested out of the uh, Ozark region in Missouri. Uh, our all of our wood is seasoned rather than kiln dried, so it's dried naturally. It gives it more oils. We get more natural flavors. It's just a better better contribution to the whiskey. Uh, when it's aged naturally like that. Uh, that char number four seems to be the sweet spot for us. And the toasted heads do just add a whole nother level of, of dynamic and character uh, to really, really add some complexities to this. And uh, we'll see as we walk through them today, each one yeah. is unique. Each one is a special little uh, uh, magic show all in of itself. Um, but, but by keeping that consistent and making sure that we're following these steps and not not cutting any corners. Um, we're we're uh, we're really uh, we're really uh, scaling uh, the way you'd want to see a company like us scale. So you guys have put out. You have your bourbon. You have your rye, which uh, I think the I think the rye is so good it doesn't really often get uh, talked about as much because it gets overshadowed by how good your bourbon is getting. Uh, but the rye is fantastic as well. I've also seen a lot of interesting finishes thanks to uh, Joseph Brazo sending some. Um, seen a Moscatel yeah. finish, the port finish. We've seen, I saw, I had the, um, the Isla, Isla Scotch cask finish, which was mm -hmm. delicious. Um, as far as finishes and possibly, are you guys just kind of, now that the expansion is happening, any plans in the, in the far future to extend the, the product line anyway, a new mash bill, maybe a weeder, maybe a, a burai, something along those lines, or, if you say that, will somebody come on the screen and kill you for saying that? Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so to, to be fair, to get a little, little, a tiny peek behind the curtain, not looking too far back. Okay. Uh, that does expand our opportunities. So I don't think yeah. you're going to see a new mash bill from us anytime soon. Uh, we are in a very grateful position to have the good problem to have where uh, people are drinking the juice as fast as it's getting to that five-year mark. Uh, so we are, we are looking to make sure that we sustain uh, that growth in the markets that we're at as people discover us. We, it's, it's important to us to not be one of those whiskeys that just ends up being on the secondary market that's hard to find and hard to get. We really want this to be an everyday drinker for you if you've, uh, if you've chosen to put us on your shelf. Uh, so some of these specialty ones, more on that line, you're absolutely right. So 2017 was a big ramp up in production. Here we are in 2022. We're finally reaping uh, the benefits of that of that of that um, kick up. So we will see some really creative finishes coming out, at least within our own distillery releases. So you're going to have to uh, keep tabs on Joe to see what he can uh, <laughs> see what he can scroll away. <laughs> for um, but we uh, but we're very excited about those opportunities. And you're, you're absolutely right. Be because of these expansions, because of the extra production, we're going to have a few more options in front of us that we really haven't had uh, for, for a few years. Well, listen, I, I got to always ask for the viewers to see if I can get a little peek behind the curtain. Oh, sure. Because sure. everyone everyone always gets excited about, you know, what's coming, especially when these – there's so many great distilleries that were so good, including you, you know, la a couple of years ago that were very impressive for the age. Now that they're starting to come of age, now everybody wants to know what's happening with them. You I mean, you know, guys like you and uh, and Peerless and uh, yeah. um, Frey Ranch and some of those distilleries that are – you know, going grain to glass and doing some great things. So yeah, exactly. You know, I love it. And you, you, uh, without saying more than I'm allowed to say, I agree with you about our rye. Our yeah. production for rye had increased in 2017 also. 
Mm -hmm. um, so that is going to be, we're going to be seeing that in more markets. More people, I think, are going to be familiar with that 100% uh, rye uh, mash bill that we do for that whiskey. And, and it's even possible we can uh, we can explore some alternative um, presentations of that. I think I can, I think I said that safely. Yes. Yeah. Alternative yeah, presentations. Yeah. Yes. I like that. And, that, <laughs> and that was, and that was interesting. Cause I remember back, cause I've always, I've always had like this little bit of an issue with hundred percent rise and mm -hmm. Ethan Same. and Katie, Ethan and Katie Turk sent me a hundred percent cast strength rye. I'm like, oh, I'll give it a whirl. Like I, I, in my mind, I was already like, I, I know I'm not going to like it. And it completely changed my mind. It blew me away. Yeah. And I, I absolutely loved it. And it's still, probably to today. I mean, it's, it's one of my favorite of the hundred percent rise and rise in general. It just has such a unique, delicious profile. So, you know, kudos to you guys for, for doing that. So love that. Thank you. Thank you for the endorsement there. And that's, uh, you know, I don't, as a whiskey consumer myself, I don't discriminate against styles, but I, I least frequently reach for rise, I would say. Um, yeah. And I agree with you 100%. Obviously, I'm wearing the brand. I'm on the payroll. So you'd expect me to say that. But I'm speaking as a consumer. Uh, yeah. It is special. It's a common rye. It's a uh, baker dry that we use. And, and mm. the barrels actually do a lot of that work for us as well. Keeps that long, lingering, spicy finish without any, yeah. any harsh or uh, it, it's robust without being intense. Uh, so, real, yeah. so real quick, Gary, I'll give you a little time to uh, some uh, selfless uh, plugs here. Uh, what, um, really? how, many, how, many how many states is a uh, wooden villain now? Absolutely, yeah. We're in twenty-four states, so twenty-six 24 states within those states. Just with the some of the some of the breakups that get there, uh, the unique, unique, unique sizes like California, they have more than one market. But we're in twenty-four states total, including our home state of Washington. And uh, with the expansion and so much more whiskey being produced, I would imagine some more rollouts in some other states are are in the books. Uh, it's definitely the long-term goal. So okay. we are we don't know if that looks like 2025 or 2027. That sort of depends on yeah, for uh, sure. where the depletions in the markets are at. We know we've we've seen consistent growth again, thanks to to, to the support that, that we have here in front of us and the discovery that people have in the places where we're at. Uh, but yeah, the, the intention is to grow to all 50 states and even start doing some uh, some small international stuff. That's way down the pipeline. That's not a next year next year goal or plan. But you'll see us uh, you'll see us around more places uh, very very shortly. That's awesome. Uh, last last question before we dive into here. Any anything new coming out uh, very soon that you could talk about that folks could uh, watch out for? So if you happen to be in the state of Washington. At okay. the distillery, we're going to have a Brett's pick coming out this Saturday. So we have one single barrel. He found a little, uh, <laughs> you're right, I'll see you there. Uh, we, uh, we, it's a six-year-old barrel. And okay. we were over there picking, uh, picking some of our rye barrels. And we were over there, I was over there with Brett picking some of our uh, single barrels that we were going to put into our program, like the, the drinks we have in front of us today. And about five years ago, we found one that was just unique in all the right ways. Um, as he brought it back and we were doing it, it's been six years now, he was tasting it. He kept proofing it down to see what he wanted to release it at. And every time he brought it down below cast strength, it just, it was good, but it wasn't as good as it was at that full, at that full barrel expression. So yeah. it's coming out, it's going to be around 123 proof, which is, Ooh, uh, wow. Is, you know, okay. not, it's pretty, pretty big when you consider our entry yeah. proof is 110. Uh, ours have climbed up a little bit higher than that, but not much higher than that. I, just I wonder. I, I, I wonder. I wonder how that one will live up to the Iceman or Maverick. That sounds like a pretty close proof, to be honest. Oh man, it is good. It is good. You're getting, you're getting I, a I, lot of. Uh, you're getting a lot of. You know, hot summers over these years that are. You think that are driving up this proof? You know, that's an interesting question, and I would speculate. Sort of, <laughs> but but it is a speculation as a, as a company that's been doing this for uh, twelve years now. Uh, we have three different rick houses everything we're pulling from right now is coming from shed three and we do actually have three we have six total at this point i love how you call a rick i love how you call a rick house a shed <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want i want one of those sheds in my backyard <laughs> oh man it, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful space to spend an afternoon maybe not when it's 115 degrees out there yeah. but you know uh, but th these are they all have a little bit of a different character to them they all have a little bit of a different size uh, so the proofs have have been transitional, but we could make a pretty safe guesstimate or speculation that the hotter summers do drive uh, that that proof up just a little bit. Um, but it, it's going to be over the average of a five year time. So we just in the dry, arid climate of eastern Washington, 
Uh, we end up losing just a little bit more alcohol than water to the angel share. So the hotter it is, the more we lose, uh, the higher proof it typically would see, with exceptions. But but that's a general uh, a general guideline we can follow. Man, uh, I man, I thought it was I thought it was awesome that I had my uh, my lawnmower and my snowblower in my shed. Way to way to <laughs> way to really like uh, ruin the rest of my day there, Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Scott, first of all, Scott has a moose. Scott has a moose in his shed because he's kind of oh, a moose. <laughs> oh, moose. Oh, oh. I'll give you a moose. Uh, and with that, let's yeah. uh, dive into these samples. Uh, uh, let's do it. Uh, well, let's say let's say hi to our esteemed uh, patrons and guests, um, Joseph Brazzers, who's pretty much a uh, basically works at Woodenville. What's going on, man? Pretty much. Not a lot. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad you uh, can join with us. Uh, yeah. Blind squirrel in the bottom left. He took off the Atlanta Braves hat, which I'm kind of thankful for, but it's okay. I still love you, man. Don't worry. I have two more in the waiting in the background. <laughs> uh, it, actually, really, actually, really quick. I was just curious uh, from Blind Squirrel how the uh, how the Braves uh, Brewer series went for you this past couple of days. <clears throat> All I can say is remember last year. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Oh, and to talk keep to us me all after in, the All Star break, right? <laughs> okay. To keep us all in line, we have Michelle Martin. How are you, Michelle? I'm good, but I don't think I can keep you guys in line. <laughs> oh, no. Impossible. Uh, next up, we have oh, no. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Munt. What's going on, Jimmy? Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Appreciate it. And I am also a Braves fan, so you got two on the stream this oh, evening. Dear God, so. I got to get my Mets hat right away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and last but certainly not least, it's Rob Zilla. What's up, Rob? Is Rob? For oh, hey, oh, you're glad to be here. Um, glad to support Washington whiskey, man. Um, it's my home, and uh, you guys are doing some good stuff at Woodenville and putting Washington on the map, man. I appreciate that. All right, let's do it. So Garrett, uh, he told us which uh, rank to pour him in. He said there was no rhyme or reason for it, but let's just do it this way. So we're all going to start with barrel number 7044. Yep. That's what we're going to go with. Uh, basically, I'll call out to you guys um, as we're tasting and nosing this uh, to yell out any notes you may have. Um, so... Let's start with the first one here. I'm very, very excited. Oh, man. Man, this one smells like apple butter. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's, it's very citrusy. I get apple on this all day long, like Macintosh apple. Which is weird because we don't have a I, lot of apples here in Washington. <laughs> might, might even might even be a little bit of a, a, a caramel apple to be honest yeah for sure yeah, yeah caramel i was just apple. gonna say that caramel apple mm -hmm. we do talk about that a lot there's a, the corn doesn't particularly pick anything up but there's some theology and some theory that the rye can pick up some terroirs from the from the area and we do have apples growing right next to our crops um, I think more of this has to do with the white dog whiskey personally, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of influences that can, uh, that can represent some of that, that apple note that some of you are picking up. No, it yeah, jumps up with, it jumps out with that caramel mm -hmm. and yeah. that apple just kind of creeps in. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, totally. Michelle, what are you picking up? I almost get like a little cherry note in there. Oh, good call. Yeah, this this I mean this no so far it's got beautiful balance. It's almost it you know, really does. You just really it wanted does. to live up to the hype on the palate. Uh, Jimmy, what about you, man? I got a, got some vanilla in there too. Um, definitely picking up the 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 apple note. That was the first thing I I caught when I when yep. I when I nosed it first. Yeah. What about you, Rob? So on the citrus side i kind of get like a grapefruit peel i don't know how to you know the grapefruit peels are a different kind of a citrus to me than like an orange or yeah or a zest off of a grapefruit it goes with that apple so well that it's like blends you know what i'm saying yeah it's almost like that slight almost like a slight bitter citrus but not not in a way that it would that it's killing the apple yeah. or caramel just a really well balanced yeah. nose and, and Michelle, I'm totally getting the cherry now that you said that yeah. a little bit more here and there. 
even even a little bit of like a like a light like rye bread. There's like a little bit of like a rye bread, like a I don't know, like a like almost I I don't want to say like pumpernickel, but it's like a rye bread or something. Yeah, All the right, more guys. the is coming out really. So, All right, All right guys, everybody raise your glass. Uh, here's to another Mass and Journey Whiskey Club pick. Uh, thanks for Gareth for being you on. Let's it. try Numero Uno. Here we go. Cheers. Oh, it's brighter, brighter, brighter and spicier than I thought it would be. Yeah, that's spicy. Those. That's a spicy meatball. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> on the nose, I got yeah. like, like like a buttery oh, good. bread cookie. Yeah. With a little bit of apple and, and a little honey, a little vanilla. This is like, wow. Yeah. Almost it's like, like a you're teetering on really high proof um, Irish kind of. It's like on a, almost got an Irish kind of shortbread. Yeah, apple shortbread kind of. That's thing a really. That's a really. I was. Good I was. Food. I was just gonna say like there's a shortbread kind of note to it. There's a little bit of like a, that creaminess, but that that really nice richness that you get from like a shortbread. That was good. And now, not not so much not so much the grapefruit, but to go along with that spice, I'm getting a little lemon peel, mm. which is really interesting. I'm getting a savory note back here. You know, Fred Minix knows yeah, about. I mean, Dripping. I'm getting a savory kind that, of that's that spice. That spice is lighting up right here in my jaw, man. It's just yeah. But it's coming yeah, up right it's like pepper, something savory. Pepper yeah. and it yeah. hits you right up front, but it yep. it where you're expecting that burn, it just kind of grabs hold and gives you that nice easy hug. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the finish on this. This is good. Yeah, it's got, a, nice. it's got an oak too. That's that's really yeah. nice. Yep. Not not over oaked or anything like that. It's, no. it's really nice. Yeah, I'm I'm all about the 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 nose and the finish on this are are mm. stellar. Yeah, it's a really nice finish on really that. Really nice finish on it. Gary, is this uh are we kind of getting close to a few of your notes? This is actually my favorite part of everything I do. Like you're all walking through exactly what I'm walking through when I when I was picking these barrels for you. So not only are you getting close, you're knocking them out of the park. There is something about that peel. Uh, Blind Squirrel, you talked about that black pepper. I think uh -huh. that's real prevalent, that mid-back palate. Michelle, yep. that cherry note that you got, I get it a lot too. And revisiting the nose after we've cheated and got that on our palates, the only thing I haven't heard anybody say, and maybe it's maybe I'm crazy, maybe it's my nose, there's like a weird, subtle undertone of chocolate on my nose that's in that oh. like chocolate cherry subtle mm. subtlety. Mm. But it goes away immediately as but soon as I get so that muted. Yeah. It's yeah. Very muted. Yeah. Very muted. And yeah, I, very one of my muted. favorite parts about this barrel is how robust it is in that brightness and that spiciness and that boldness. But somehow the, the transitions of those complex flavors are subtle. There's nothing subtle about this whiskey. But it's uh, it, it's it's special. It's special. And, you, you know, and one one thing so I'll good. say is that I I appreciate with with your your whiskeys is a lot of times people when they describe like grain they're they're describing it like in a in kind of more of a, a negative context. But the 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 grain and maybe you like mentioned it before like the terroir of it. There's just something about it that is so unique to you guys that it. I, I've learned to appreciate that more. Like when you taste that, like that, that grain, that, you know, the, the white dog aspect of it, the quality of that is, is still present, but in a very good way. Yeah. So. I, I think, I think Garrett said it perfectly. There's, there's a lot of nuance in the bourbon. That's that the palate isn't subtle, but those, all those flavors that you kind of get on the nose are on the palate because it's so in your face with the spice um, I really do. I, I, yeah. I'm fine. Is, is anyone going kind of, to say, is, though, for 115.8 proof, I mean, it doesn't drink that hot. Yeah. Well, we, I'm sorry. What were we going to say, Joseph? I was going to say, now that, now that I'm blending the palate with the note, yep. that citrus has become more vegetal. I'm getting kind of celery yes. as opposed to, you know, lemon or something like that. Something like that. So I think on the palate as well, becoming more vegetal because I'm not getting any of those soup baking spices that wouldn't be yeah. usually. Yeah, has. this is this. Yeah, this is way more on the spice, citrus. Yeah. I could yeah. definitely see 
where you could be getting a vegetal note, Joseph, because and the only reason why I say that is because I have gotten that in some Irish whiskeys as well. And when Rob made the connection to some Irish style type flavors in here, I could see vegetal a little bit. Man, that thing is a beast, man. That, that's yeah. good. <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of I don't know if anybody else is. The thing is, that's um, a trip to me. On it. Mm. Go ahead, Scott. No, it's just there's a little bit of like a um, like I'm getting more on the finish, a little bit more of like a, a marshmallow. There's a little bit of like a marshmallow uh, aspect to it. I don't know if that's a kind of blending in with the shortbread part of it, but yeah, it's pretty pretty darn nice. Michelle, what about you on the palate? Is this one the open? It's unique you? to me on this mm -hmm. one because I do drink quite a bit of Woodenville uh, cask strength stuff. Is Pepper is all on the front and it wraps around your tongue at the front to mid palate and then goes away to that oak at the end, kind of that sweet oak at the end, where a lot of the times the woodenville spice, the baking spice kind of takes over at the back of the palate for me as I as I do the cast drink yeah. bourbon. And this one is unique in that, that it doesn't have that where the pepper carries through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. I mean, for yeah, for me, maybe it's because it's my first pour of the day. I'm getting pepper front to back, but... I don't mind it at all. So, all right, getting, let's uh, go ahead, Michelle. I was gonna say I'm getting sweet on the tip of my tongue, but then the peppers on the side. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's it's it, the peppers hitting me right on the side of the palate. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just living there right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, Lord, uh, I know you said that um, there's you had a little subtle chocolate on the nose, but I I've got it on the palate a little bit too. I can you do. Yeah, I can taste it in there. It's, yeah. it's very subtle, though. It's, like, it, it's almost irrecognizable, but it, it's somewhere my my sensory started going right around that cherry note that Michelle was yeah, getting. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where that little subtlety yep. of presence was. I just yeah. I thought it was unique in this expression because it's not signature with all of our products. I think that it was it was that that subtlety yeah. that made this pretty unique. It's definitely an outlier. All right, I can smell it now. Palette time. Well, we're off to a darn good start, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> that's number one. Holy Migration is important. Oops. Can't wait to try the rest. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's got their play basket. Yeah, is this a what was the game show with all the whammies? What was the game? The whammies? I'm a duck hunter. Can you tell? <laughs> Someone's got like the game show network going. I think. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the whammy. Uh, yeah, here's yeah. Here, here, here's some whammy. No whammy. Whammy strikes again. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm going so to the nose on number two now. Yep. 7040 is the next one, guys. 7040. Oh, this, this, this got some nice richness to it right away. You can tell the complexity of this. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm looking for. This is the nose oh. right here, baby. Now we're now we're talking. Yeah, yeah this one you don't have to like pick no, man. Hit the rows out. They just hit you. Yeah, it's, like, it's 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 rich. Uh, and, it's rich. Jason, and heavy. Jason is fond of thinking like cream soda or root beer. Mm -hmm. That's in there. Some syrup. Yeah, that's that's the that's kind of the quintessential Woodenville note that I that I associate Woodenville with, which is like either a root beer slash cream soda type thing, like yeah. Gasparilla. Mm -hmm. And some and sometimes on single barrels, it either comes through as more of like a artificial root beer taste, and then sometimes it's more of like a natural like sarsaparilla type taste yeah but that that like that fresh like like warm caramel note is like so heavy for me on this one yeah i get a lot of toffee on this one yeah 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 and maple syrup oh yeah i can see yeah. that and and a toasted wood maybe. oh that's what i get it almost smells like so you guys do the cask maple syrup and i've got a, a hint of that in there too that you guys, oh, you nice. guys sell yeah, maple stores. syrup's a good call. <laughs> there is no cross contamination, but you're absolutely right. Those uh, those flavors are, are very. <laughs> yeah. very cool. I feel I like I can get. I feel like I'm tasting the or smelling, I should say, those toasted heads. I feel like it's coming through on this. On yeah. this, it's like so whether <laughs> it's whether it's like the graham cracker marshmallow type thing. Yeah, for sure. Like a, 
a little bit of like a singed oak toast. I could smell yeah. that on here. Yeah, this, this this one's like this one's like really like well rounded. Like the balance of it is nice. Like to have that like that sweet and spice uh, and that that boldness and that fruit is really starting to kind of come out in this too. But not, but not like a crazy marshmallow note. You know? Yeah, no, no, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no. Go ahead, Garrett. What were you gonna say? I just like, just a just change like it's on our barrels, like not not that anybody needs or and, wants. A, and, a, and, a, and, a, and look, and on that note, I don't owe Brazer anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it smells it, like something is more. <laughs> <laughs> the the general uh, uh, the the practice for our the the barrels that we have for Independence Day after trying all these different variations, uh, this is something that they've branded in their lineup as a craft a craft bourbon barrel, a craft whiskey barrel, because you're, you're absolutely right. Those toasted heads, they, it's subtle. And to, to uh, Jim, your point, it's not like a fake marshmallow. There's nothing right. like uh, really, but just a little bit of those caramelizations that add to that complexity as that, yeah. as it's aging over time without compromising the staves themselves that have all those natural oils that are getting pulled from it with that natural wood flavor. Uh, yeah. the, these, the barrels do a lot of work. We're, we're proud of doing all of our things. Right. But, um, but, most of the work in the five years is coming from from that wood. It's like, it's like with that grain, it's like a nice frosted flake, like a light, like a not overdone frosted flakes or something. Yeah, well, I can't wait to taste this one, no. guys. Cheers. Right. Cheers, just, guys. And just a hint of that Luxardo cherry as opposed to a fresh cherry. Ooh. Wow. This yeah. is one of those, this is one of those instances where the palate is matching up with the with the nose mm -hmm. for me. Sorry. You're getting everything yeah. we talked about. I feel like I'm getting all of it in different parts of my palate. Yeah, and, and this this seems to be way heavier. And like like Garrett was saying before, like the like the chocolate part of it, that's starting to come out more in this one yep. to me. Yeah, yeah I, I I'm getting much more of a punch of chocolate on this and, one, and, than way, and way more of those like dark, like nice, like summer fruits and stuff. Those like a stone fruit or something on this thing. And where and I thought the finish on the last one was good, this is smooth. This is yeah. just yeah. a nice. This is all mouthfeel too. This is coating. Yeah, yeah, and but it's still keeping it's an exceptional it's as, feel. Yeah, yeah, and it's not as punchy in the face with the spice as the first right. one, but it still carries that nice high rye backbone that Woodenville is known for, which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, far less, and the it's got the, the, the spice yeah. coming. You know, it's yeah. uh, more subtle, and it's sure. got some of those making spices that they're picking. Yeah, yeah Rob, for. Rob, what are you, Rob, what are you thinking about this one? So to me, you're losing the brightness that you had a little bit on the front of the palette in the first one. And that's where it's more, you know, where you were saying smooth. It's getting, it's almost like it's aged a little bit more yeah. um, than the other ones are. And it's just way more balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Michelle, what about you? I'm getting almost a, a buttery note in there. So maybe that's the toffee you were referencing, Jason. I yeah, it is. Picking that up. Yeah, it's very buttery, and to Joseph's point, it is. It's it's mouth coating this one. It's yeah, very, very. Palate. very. Yeah. That one's really Scott, nice. That Scott, actually that Scott. reminds me a little bit of the Ice Man, Scotty. Oh, see, no, I, I, it reminds yeah. me more of Maverick. Do I need to do a bottle chug? No, no, <laughs> no bottle chugs. Okay. <laughs> I right. think Google frowns upon that. <laughs> I frown upon. <laughs> I think yeah, it's got the spice. Nice. Of the, I think it's got the spice of the Maverick, but it's got a little bit more of those chocolatey notes that Scott loves so much in the Iceman. Yeah, yeah. This is it, it's much Chocolate more like toffee. It's, yeah, it's much. It's much more like I'll, I'll like like classify it as like traditional but complex. Like there's a lot of those really nice notes that you look for in a in a rich like kind of complex bourbon. That's that's like my thing. When you when you taste that, you know that. All right, Garrett, what did you think about this one when you first tried it? Yeah, absolutely everything that you've hit on so far. Uh, Scotty, you mentioned the, uh, the richness on the nose, and mm -hmm. then it was brought up how consistent this is in the palate. I feel the exact same way. I do appreciate what Rob was saying about how some of that brightness is lost when yep. we lose that citrus element that we tasted in that first barrel. But those richer, it's more, yeah. it's almost decadent. Uh, it yeah. still yeah. has some of those cooking spice qualities to it, uh, but very cool mouthfeel. Um, and just, just overall, it leans on the sweeter side for our bourbon, even being a high, a high rye bourbon, 
uh, a sweeter expression than we typically see. But it, it, I love this barrel. I love this barrel. I think you guys are hitting all the all the right notes. Garrett, there. if we don't buy this one, whoever bottles it, please, dude. I'll pay you extra. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, blind squirrel. We didn't, even, blind squirrel. Oh. We, didn't even, we didn't even try the other two yet, man. Say, we got two more to go. <laughs> well, yeah. Look at no, this. Look saying, at this. Look at, even if we do pick one better, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, really it is good. good. It is really, it is it really, is really good. good. Yeah, whereas yeah, the first yeah. one just got the side <laughs> top. <laughs> this one, this one goes the whole time. That's, yeah, it yeah does. for sure. Everything else. Uh, yeah, any, really anybody, does. anybody picking up on a like a slight mint note, like a little bit of a, a yeah. mint yes. on, on it yes. as well? Yep. I get the chocolate more than the mint. Yeah, there's a, there's like a little Andy's candy vibe going on. Oh, weird. <laughs> on the exhausted breath for and me, that's you say that I can catch that just coming. right at the yeah. the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yeah. I, it's it's coming as it's sitting out more that Andy's me, candy is coming out more than nose. Some of the same notes I get on the 100% rye, so I think it's in the rye in the mash bill. Yeah. And this one that's coming through a little bit more with those, you know, kind of rye. I have a question for Types Jason. Flavor notes. The have, uh, Jason, have you had that strength fry from the bill? Uh, yes, I have. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I'm bringing one. I was one just, I was just about to say, I've been chasing a cast strength rye. I, Actually, I you love, know what? It is, I love the it is a, but I can't. I, I haven't found it yet. So our yeah, cast strength I, I don't, rye. I don't have a. I don't have a bottle of it. I got a. I got a still sample of it. Still early. Really, no. Yeah, I. I got a sample of it that I drank very quickly. I would love a bottle of that stuff. Those thing was thing was delicious. Well, um, well, I know somebody who has an extra bottle, and we'll be seeing you in a week. Well, we can. Uh, well, the great we get, we get maybe we'll do a trade, Joseph. I got the great thing about Washington State <laughs> yeah. is their website, and that they ship to us here in Washington State for free. Um, so, just thank you, really COVID. That's the best part about COVID. Is <laughs> the bill will ship to me for free. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, that's kind of nice. Jeez. All right, guys, let's go to we're moving on to yeah. 7320. All right. Which is the third one up. All right. I hope you guys didn't drink all the one and two lot. I didn't think I hope you didn't drink one and two all the way. I'll see you this week. Well, so yeah. I realized yeah. it about half. I realized as I was plowing through one and two, I better. <laughs> Better pump slow the, down a little bit. So pump, yeah, pump, gotta, yeah, pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, pump leave, the brakes a little bit. A, leave a little bit in the glass to go back to in case we need to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have a hard decision. <laughs> if this wasn't a barrel pick, that would be gone. <laughs> like, gone. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's pretty rich too. That's a lot of vanilla on that. A lot of vanilla. That's yeah. all vanilla. Yeah. Yeah. That's a vanilla bomb. So, this yeah. is a vanilla bomb, but I'm also getting a little hint of like red for like strawberry, like red yeah. fruit on oh. this nose. See, yep. and for me, that and for me, this is where I'm picking up like a little bit of that, like that uh, earthiness, that like root beer. There's like um, that. This is coming through more for me on this one. I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting more yeah. of a red fruit for me here, oh, like a man. like a summer fruit on this. This reminds me of those damn little like root beer candies right now. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so weird. I can see the strawberry. I yeah. can smell that, Jason. That's yeah, I, interesting. I can, see the, I can see the liquor. But that vanilla that is kind of dominating. Yeah, it's like, like for me. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's like it's like if you made a root beer float with strawberry ice cream. Yeah. That's, yeah. <clears throat> That's about it, though. It doesn't have like a bunch of stuff. It's got. So you know those strawberry canes in the wrapper that looks like a strawberry yeah. cane. <laughs> yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has the the like the gooey the stuff goo on the inside? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what it yeah. smells like to me in the strawberry. It's like very specific. Yeah, it's very specific. You know what this is? This is a frosted strawberry pop tart. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's pick this one. He's got some cherry pop tarts. Let's Let's get that, go that that greeny, bready oh pop tart. God, yeah, this is a uh, this it, uh, man. What, I can't. What, know. I, what, what are we? Get, what, what, what is this? Get, what is this going to be like? The summer of our strawberry picks, or what is this going to be? I guess so. <laughs> strawberry pop tart. Oh, this is nice. crazy. Yeah. But yeah, like you, I, I agree though. What you guys said, very. It's still. It's still very vanilla forward. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying in any sort of way that the strawberry is is strong, 
but there's a definite red fruit aspect to it that I'm picking up. Yeah. Sure. And, and oh, I'm yeah, still, that... and even on this one, there's a little wave of chocolate here too that I'm picking up. A slight wave. I think it's more of like a like a like a hot chocolate powder. Like like, you know, stuff like that straight... you, you mix with water like Swissmas. It's kind of like that. Mm. Which you know it's mm. not strong chocolate. I it's can't wait to taste this one because it's the the, right. the nose is just like it's crazy. I can't stop it. smelling the strawberry. <laughs> I know the nose is crazy on this one. That's spicy too. Mm, spicy. Yeah, did not expect yeah, that. That's kind of like the first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, more than black pepper. It's, it's a sweeter spice than the first one. Yeah, it's yeah. sweeter spice. It's not as it's not as savory as the first one. But it, it punches you kind of like that first one where it just mm -hmm. kind of hits you right up front. Yeah, it's got that yeah. spice. That but lingering. It I mean the that lingering like effervescent finish that's just like kind of tingles. That's one thing I've noticed about all three of these first ones is that finish is so incredible because it sits yeah. there without that just crushing burn mm -hmm. and you just get to experience the entire thing just over. And it, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful. That's, I mean, I, that's, like I, I think, these. yeah, that 22% rye. I mean, I think that's one of the best parts of Woodenville. You get into that high rye, get a nice spice, but it's never, never had a Woodenville where the spice or that high rye has ever tasted hot or overwhelming. It's always balanced. My my this is my, my first wooden bill. My question is going to be: Is uh, when's Blind Squirrel going to have so much wooden bill? He's going to start shredding on that guitar behind him. <laughs> it could come up quickly. Good. <laughs> That's not even the good one. I got. There's the less oh, there we go. right there. Oh yeah. So I I, I live I live uh, about five minutes from where Les Paul was born. Oh no, kidding. Waukesha, Wisconsin, baby. Uh, you know, I love his guitars, but his his original uh, pickups. Uh, we're not here to talk about guitars. Sorry. <laughs> Good whiskey. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Unfortunately, there's, there's better humbuckers now, though. So. Spell it. Fair. <laughs> Very much so. I will tell you, I will tell you, as someone who owns like 30 bottles of wood mill in different iterations, this, this one is as Woodenville as it gets. This is kind of like yeah. a prototype Woodenville. Vanilla, caramel, you know, a little bit of fruit, you know, strawberry as opposed to cherry. Mm -hmm. This one is pretty standard, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say- I, This one didn't seem to be as complex as the last two. No, no, I, I think definitely it's less complex than two. And I think you would have to really appreciate the spice and a little bit more heat on a bourbon with three for sure. Yeah. Three, three impressed well, me on the nose. Wasn't as impressed on the palate. Um, uh, Michelle, what, a, what, a, what were you thinking on number three? I just, I can't get past the spice. There's just yeah. so much, so much spice. Yeah. I was expecting yeah, it this to be sweeter with the nose. I still think it's, it's sweeter. It's sweeter spice. It is. It is but sweet. It is supposed to, as opposed to a punch, it's more of a, surprise so yeah it's a little blind squirrel what are you blind squirrel what are you thinking about the third one compared to the other two uh, well it doesn't even come close to number two I, I mean right now number two is just like yeah hmm, you yeah. know a holy grailer for me i, I like it better than um, one yeah jimmy m what do you think it, i may be in the minority but i love one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, but I do. I think out of the three we've tasted so far, this is this is in third place. It doesn't. It, it lacks something like it, it. It's it doesn't have quite the, um, not quite as complex. Like I said earlier on, as one yeah. and two are. I agree, Rob Zillow. What about you? So three's got the biggest mismatch between the nose and what. Um, mm -hmm. I was really expecting Fair. a little bit more on the oh, nose. I, I could not agree. I, I could not agree with you more. It didn't deliver as much on the palate. Still yep. has all those standard wooden bill flavors, but yeah, it's yeah, good. Could not agree with you more, Garrett. What were what were your thoughts on this one? I, I'm just sitting over here giddy that you guys are you guys get it. You're dissecting this very well as a group, and it's it's 
uh, if you notice, that's been intentional. That's I, I told you there was no rhyme or reason. I lied. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I knew you were up to something. I knew you were up to there's, a, there's a subtlety of, of citrus and things that are unique and peppery about number one. The the number two is rich and robust, and the nose is like the the mouth and the and the palate. Number three, the nose is completely different than the palate, mm -hmm. and nothing overly aggressive. I I I I like that you guys have a little consensus. It seems like this is maybe number three of three so far, so maybe not our winner, but. In its own right, is is a really cool whiskey. Oh, and I it's still a great drink. Oh yeah, don't, yeah. don't yeah. take any of those comments in the negative. It's, flagship is is a good assessment. I think it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I, I can see I, we're I, we're like on this roller like, coaster. I, I kind I'd of buy like a bottle for the nose. I misspoke earlier when I said this is like typical wooden bill. What I meant to say is that this one doesn't have any surprises. Sure. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because, you know, what yeah. Mill makes is all fabulous stuff, but there's nothing surprising about this one. There's nothing jumps out and goes, oh, yeah. yeah. You, 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 you'd, almost, you'd, almost have to, you'd almost have to appreciate like a like a real peppery with a nice spicy kind of bourbon to, to, enjoy, yeah, to but, want to enjoy that. Spice. This is delicious, but it doesn't surprise me. Anymore. Yeah, this, this to yeah. me is the Woodenville – Right. DNA. I'm with you 100%. But, I, on the nose, I was expecting an outlier, but on yeah. the palate, it's not. Yeah, to me, it's in the it's the Woodenville DNA with uh, a little bit less root beer and more red fruit strawberry involved. And I, I that's as I much as I that. could appreciate that on the nose, I wanted more of it on the palate, and it just didn't it just didn't hit. So Love I've it. heard you guys talk about the strawberry theme in a number of different you know uh, bourbons that you've you know picked, but. I've never smelt it before, and mm -hmm. this is the, uh, the experience of just smelling that it? strawberry. It is yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, it's it's not, and and to think, um, you know, we 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 chose our peerless uh, single barrel rye. We called it Strawberry Grooves, and I think there's only been ever a handful of of whiskeys, even just rye, that I've ever gotten strawberry on. Um, but to get him on a bourbon for me is even probably more rare. Uh, so the fact that we there's a Woodenville here with a strawberry note in it is pretty freaking cool. So, yeah. Hey, I right. uh, I'm taking it for Garrett. He was just mentioning a strawberry group uh, peerless rye pick that we did. Yep, you get to try it. Who gets to try it? Garrett gets to try it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Garrett, yeah. Garrett needs to. I got, I got. Yeah, Garrett needs to try that pick. Yeah. All right. I, I, I got. I got two, and I'm taking one order with you. Oh, this I'm excited. So. I'm excited. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Last but not least, nice. number seven three three four. Let's see what Garrett has in store for us next. Clint, <laughs> your palate and and hydrate. <laughs> oh man. Cleanse your palate. Gosh, I've, I've been waiting for Jason to mention something about my cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, but every time every time you drink from it, I puke a little bit in my mouth. So I can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spoken like a true Mets fan. Yeah. I saw Scherzer's out for six to eight weeks. Today. Yes, he is. Hey, here we go. We, yeah. hey, we, we're not, we're not even got the way for the Mets. We're not even got the way for the Mets for the All Star game. They're just. They're just going to take a shit right now. So, Dude, not 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 with the way the offense. Listen, uh, unfortunately, the offense is going to have to carry us now for a few weeks. But you know they're playing well. So Alonzo freaking crushed a four hundred and fifty foot homer earlier, <laughs> won the game. We'll see what happens. Dude, I'll, I'll, no, I'll give it to the no, I don't know what offense is. They're rocking it right now. To a salt team. Is that what fan is? Apparently, they don't know what offense is either. Hey, all I know is that the Mets are about nine or ten games up on everybody in the East. So, yeah, yeah, we got we got, we got some we got some room. So are the Yankees. You guys are rocking. <laughs> yeah, well, the Yankees haven't played shit. The LA at least sucks. So. <laughs> hey, allow me to uh, throw a shout out to my boys in Arizona. I love you guys. Cheers. I'll see you next week. And go Braves. We're gonna go watch the Diamondback series. There you go. I'm going all to right. Kentucky next week. This this shout out is all my uh, bourbon people. <laughs> oh, this is cherry on the nose. Yeah, oh. it's a lot of oh, cherry. A lot of cherry. A lot of cherry. Cordial, a lot of cherry. 
John Contreras with Goop inside. This is this is almost like an already mixed old fashioned in a glass. Yeah, crazy. This is like those chocolate cherry uh, 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 alcohol chocolate cherry thingies that you get at Christmas. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, yeah. Those. Uh, my mom. My mom eats those ones. The what are they? The the cellos. Or the cello. Yeah. The court. Yeah. yeah. Can, the, the cordials. Yeah. The cordial candies. Cordials. Yeah. Oh my God, that smells yeah. wonderful. Oh. Oh. That's a fat kid nose. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, that <laughs> nose is incredible. Yeah, this this nose is a little yeah. bit insane. This is uh, I I'm not gonna compare it to number two yet, but man, it's up there. Oh. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, cherry, yeah, this is just, cherry chocolate, this is like cherry. This is all cherry sweet. Garcia ice cream for me on the nose. There you go. Yeah. There we cherry go. Garcia. Here, just, here we go. Here we go. Black, black cherry, black cherry, vanilla. Some like chocolate flakes in there. Oh my god! Here, here we go with all yeah. the fat kids. Here we That's go. Right. <laughs> That's right. I definitely get the black cherry for sure. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Oh man! And the ice cream and the chocolate. But yeah, this is this is uh, probably the most decadent nose we've we've had so far. It, it's it's Gary definitely as, it's as up, close to number two. It definitely as close to two. It's as close as two as we've we've had. Yeah, I mean, crazy, all right. crazy nose. All, right. all right, guys, let's. But let's see, right. let's let's see if the worst. palate lives up to the hype. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Wow, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's my wow. god, that palette hits you mm. exactly like it smells. I mm -hmm. mean, it's I wonder it's why like this one was so last. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what are the odds? Yeah. Is this random? It was random. Yeah, yeah. remember, it's <laughs> random. random. Sure, sure it is. Yeah, that's this that's is the deep. lowest proof one, too, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and that, that's my problem with it. It drinks light. It drinks oh exactly like the nose. Oh. This, this, I, you know, I just want to like, I, I want to cherry cordial and chocolate. But I want to, I want to, I want to like nestle up to a warm fire and hug this whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I, yeah. I was about to say, if we pick this bottle. I yeah. will root for the Mets at least one game. This year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if they if they're playing if they're playing the Brewers, right? <laughs> no. Yes, no. absolutely. No. <laughs> I hate. I now hate Blind Screw. I loved them like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. All right, let's go around on this one. Well, well, let's start with uh, Rob this time. Rob, what do you what do you think about this one? It's the lowest proof, but we. We all seem to be pretty impressed by the nose and palate. What do you got? So I think the the nose and the palate are great. The only thing I think two has on top of it is it's got a little bit longer linger on the finish. Yes, totally. Um, totally agree. The cherry comes forward on this. Which to is totally agree. Odd for wooden mill to me because I drink a lot of it, but I like it. Um, but I wish it had the finish of two. I, or the oh, length yeah. of finish, I should say. Yeah, I have to go. I have to go back to it a little bit to yeah. see. But I, yeah, I agree with you uh, off the bat, Jimmy. Jimmy, Mutt, what do you think, man? Same thing. I mean, I that it doesn't doesn't quite have the uh, the spice. I don't think as oh, as maybe two does as well. Um, oh, definitely not going to finish. I mean, it's this, it's it, it's good for sure, but it, it drinks like a cocktail. It's crazy, man. Uh, Michelle, what about you? What do you think about this one? I like it. It's, um, but definitely, I feel like I just bit into one of those chocolate cherry cordials that Joseph mentioned. It just mm -hmm. is that whole burst of chocolate or cherry first and then chocolate. I I like it. It's really good. Yeah. Blind squirrel. I know what he thinks. He wants a whole bottle. He wants the barrel already. What do you think, bud? Well, it it's funny because that, like you said, that the nose just instantly hit you and you got exactly what you were smelling. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm probably jumping forward a little bit, but oh, you look, he's, already comparing between, to, he's already comparing to two. Look at him. <laughs> when you, yeah. When you nose between four and two, 
Uh, Joseph, what do you, what do you got, think? Yeah, Joseph, what do you, what are your thoughts on four? The nose and out match almost perfectly. It's yep. Got no finish here. It doesn't give you a Kentucky hug because yep. it's a little lighter. But I tell you what, man, during this whole discussion, it's still on my palate. Mm -hmm. So it's it is it stays that's, on the tongue forever. That's the thing. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it sticks Agreed. to your it sticks to your palate, and you just sit there and experience it for a while. Uh, it, a long time. It, yeah, it has a lighter finish. It I think it is the lowest proof we've had. Yeah, it doesn't do it here. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't give you a Washington hug. Yeah, the Washington. <laughs> but it stays on the, the it Washington. stays on the palate for days. All right, Scotty. What, what about what do you think of this one, Scotty? Man, I I I like it. I mean, be, between two and three. I mean, I I think I like <laughs> the I think I like the richness of of two more. I think. I think the thing I'm struggling with is the fact that with four, I mean, it's, it's spicy. And for me, it's a little drier than any of the others. So one, I think I, one I, the driest. yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not getting any dryness on four. The thing for me though, really, because I, I put a lot of onus on a finish as you guys know, and the more as delicious as number four was, like the first couple sips, the more I sip it, I'm getting less of a finish. Mm -hmm. But yeah. to Joe's point, it is just sticking on the palate. Like, I mean, it, it's literally like a like a syrup, a cherry syrup chocolate. It's crazy. You can Garrett, feel it on the back of your tongue. It's a little effervescent as well. Yeah, I want to get I want to get Garrett's uh, I want to get Garrett's viewpoint on this because I'm just I'm just curious if Garrett has ever had a barrel like that. That's crazy. So this is this is a unicorn in that capacity, right? Where the the uh -huh. finish is soft, but it lingers, mm -hmm. and and that is and that's something that's really unique, and that that's going to be a subjective preference, whether that's something that we're excited about because it's so unique, or whether that is lacking a finish that you want to see. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. The Cherry Garcia comment you made on the nose was something that I definitely had in my own thoughts and my own kind of impressions of of approaching this <clears throat> barrel. Uh, I was I was Beautiful. pleasantly surprised how much that that nose held on the palate. Yeah. And then that transition at the end is the fact that it it kind of quits, but it stays. Like it stopped. Like yes. it's, it's not this. It, it, yeah. No Washington it's, hug. No, it's no. Not uh, the, it's, it's almost it's like not a cherry the, lozenge. You know, like when you have a cherry lozenge, it just sticks on the tongue. Yeah. It's and not. It just, it's not the it's not the spice that, that yeah, it, it may not have the spice, but man, it does have this like little after finish. It kind of hangs around. It's not. It's, it's still not there. The it's finish. almost a barrel. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not the finish that you want with like spice, like to be like, yeah, this has a spicy finish. It's got more of like this, uh, this like this subtle lingering thing happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think we, I think we need to, I think we need to narrow this thing down. I think, I think I have a good idea of like where we're gonna go with this thing in terms of narrowing it down. But well, I mean, oh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna eliminate three. Four. I think I think we're gonna eliminate Clearly three. two and four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna eliminate three. Well. Is is one out for everyone? No, now? it's not, guys. It's oh, it's out. I didn't think so. One's, out. <laughs> one's too weird. It's too weird. It's just it's salty and savory and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back to one here. Everybody go back to one. I thought it, I thought it was I thought it was unique. It is unique. Doesn't make it good. <laughs> everybody everybody go back to one now. Uh we've eliminated three. We go back to, or I should say, barrel seventy three twenty. We've eliminated. I instantly get the apples. Oh yeah. I instantly get perfume. It it, it just it just now when you when you go when you go back to it, it's just lighter than the others. I mean, it's yeah. just lighter. It's it is more summery. It's lighter. It just. Yeah. I mean, if if you like lighter. if you like yeah if you like richness and complexity, then then like one wouldn't necessarily be your thing. Like it's bright and it's, it's very summery. Yeah. You know, it's, bright, I mean, it's, it's spicy. It's very, I mean, I agree, Michelle, there's more, more caramel apple coming out of this every time I go back to it. Yeah. So good. I mean, I, I don't mind, I don't mind it. And I do like that. I would drink that easily any day of the week. But I think you can two just and send four, me the barrel. It's fine. Yeah, two, 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 and, you know, still, two and four are just more complex, I think, to this. I'm point. still getting that same. Of the four of them, yeah, here. of the four of them, butter. I like the finish on number one the least. Okay. Yes. 
Yeah, because the finish, yeah, the finish, really is, a bit, finished. The finish yeah. is a little bit more astringent on one, and you get that little slight hint of bitterness, too. So yeah. this, this sounds weird, but there's a little greasiness on the finish. Does that make sense? A little not bit of what, bloodiness? Not, not, not at all. A little greasy on the finish. Maybe like a seed. You go to the drive the with your parents, and you make butter popcorn, and you go have, have to clean out the car the next day. You got the leftover yeah, popcorn. Kind of. I, I can I see like that. that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Rob. Uh, Rob, That's a new between, note for me. Greasy. I like it. Well, Rob, between the three, what do you feel should be? What's your least favorite of the three that are left? Uh, one. One. All right. So it's One's it's pretty unanimous. We're gonna we're gonna eliminate seven. Go ahead. It is Go ahead, Rob. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm a finish now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and eliminate seven zero four four. So it is down to seven zero four zero coming in one hundred sixteen point twenty four proof and one hundred thirteen point five four proof. Yeah, this, this is a this is an odd this is an odd one where you've got the highest and lowest proof battling it out. This doesn't happen, I would say, very often. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, honestly. I do think there's a, a fun part about that. That that really does express the barrel's uniqueness and characteristic. I think once Definitely. we once we breach that 110 proof, oh. there's so yeah. much more contributing to that mouthfeel, that finish, and those flavor profiles. Uh, the, the, the proof doesn't tell the same the whole story, even though I frequently think it does when I'm when I'm looking at a bottle. I think I know how it's going to drink, and it just it isn't always true. God, I don't know which one knows is better. <laughs> They're yeah, both incredible. Oh, so I, I know. I like four. I, I like the nose of four better. Yeah, that's what I think it's going to come out. I guys, like. So I, what's that? I need a cigar so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I would. I would love to join you on that. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go. I think. I think. I like the flavors. I think on the the nose on four. <laughs> I think is more enticing for most folks, but I think the nose on two has more flavor punch on it. Yes, honestly. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I just find with two, you can pour, pour more out on the nose. I, yeah, I, I think number two even, just has I, I, I still, I still smell. Think, it just I still think that's that, that, better. Man, that, fit, that finish on two is like sneaky long, though. As soon as you think it's gone... Like that spice just lingers there on that thing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah, number four is chocolate covered cherry. How do you guys and do this? Like all day. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you Whoa. one thing learning from uh, just, just talking to Brett Norlin about their origins and, and learning what they learned from Dave Pickroll and and being in the space that they're in, they, they, we did this without taking any shortcuts, you know, keeping control and keeping consistency. But this is the magic part. This is the fun part to see each barrel, yeah. whether it was harvested in the summer or the winter, whether it was on a riverbank or on the top of a mountain, like each, each piece of wood is unique in and of itself. And it's such a fun way to see these expressions come through. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I I go back to four, and I keep getting more of a finish now on it. I I don't know which one I like better. The, they're both, yeah, they're the both finish delicious. on four just so lingers what forever. I, what I know is heavy. Yeah. What's important to me on, on on nosing is first impressions. Yep. You know, I hit you first. You know, yeah. You, you nose number four, and you're like, well, oh, that smells good. And then you nose number two, and you're like, holy crap. There's a, yeah, there's I, mean, a I, I think I'm in. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, razor. Hey, yeah, I, I, four has got a I, great I think, nose, but two is exceptional. Yeah, yeah there's two's more the nose. I would agree. Yeah, I like the nose uh, two better. Okay, it, just back to backing there. The two four is great, but number really two, is. I mean that is, oh, so complex but so smooth. It gives you everything that you're looking for, including that nice tight little hug. But it doesn't burn you. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. stays. God, that's good. Michelle, where finish, are you? Michelle, where are you at? The finish on number two is clearly the best. It's, it's so yeah. good. I just, I just did them back to back, and I loved four until I did them back to back, and now I'm totally. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, the thing with uh, with four for me is that to Garrett's point, 
It's a it's a unicorn. I've never never put in Bill like that, and it's good. But I can see why too. But two, I agree. I feel that way. About two is probably overall the more rounded mm-hmm. whiskey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number one oh, is, a, is a unicorn, but it's a it's just an ugly unicorn. <laughs> it's got a weird <laughs> curly stop, stop, thing. Stop, stop. I'm talking bad about number one. <laughs> yeah, number one's delicious. Yeah, oh. I like number one. Yeah. I like number one a well, lot. it's almost like number yeah. four is that one you pull out for a special occasion or to show off to friends. But number two is the bottle you look at every day and go, no, I've only got one bottle. I can't drink another <laughs> one. Yeah, that, that it is so good. I would if, grab for yeah. it every day. If we get number four, I'm getting a bottle. If we get number two, yeah, can I get okay. extra bottles, please? Three bottles, one for my boys in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, I, you, you guys can, you guys can. Yeah, I think, uh, the, you know what's that winning me so over two on number two is the you guys know I love like toffee, butter pecan. I'm getting all that, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. got yeah, it's the like, butter please pecan. see a barrel yeah. name at yeah. some point, but yeah, yeah, ice yeah, this, cream. well, yeah. yeah, it's it's so good. I all right, so guys. So let's let's do a show of hands here. It's it's been over an hour. Uh, raise your hand for barrel seven zero four zero. Kabagul, Kabagul. Is that number two? two? That's number two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Game over, man. Game over. Robzilla, Robzilla. He's kind of. <laughs> Robzilla has a delay. Yeah. Are you raising? Your, oh, there it is. There <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> Number two, it is. It looks like the winner tonight. Barrel seven zero four zero. Absolutely stellar, stellar uh, barrel. Garrett, what do what, what do you what do you think about our selection? <laughs> I, I personally, I have a big bias in this, and I don't think you could have chose wrong. But here in the way you dissected what you did, what your preferences are, and what yep. you appreciated about, it, you pulled the right characteristics to have this barrel stand out. Like the, everything you talk about is what I think makes this a, just a really special bottle. Um, and I, I'm ha- if you guys are happy, I'm happy. And I, I, I feel like I was I was hoping to make this a hard choice for you. Hopefully, I took you on a little bit of a journey. And, yeah, it was. Uh, it was pretty easy, actually. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe for Joseph, but for me, that number four. Joseph, we're going to talk about Barrel like, number one again. I have some very defensive things to say about. Yeah. <laughs> number, number four was tight. Number yeah, four I mean, kept number... raising his hand, like, "Don't forget about me. Yeah. I'm different." And it's big. Yeah. And we we, we always say this all the time. Once you say this all the time, we finish. Yeah. We say this. We say this all the time. That's why I need Scott to kind of we kind of balance each other out because Scott will likes to go a little bit more traditional and complex. I yeah. like that as well, but I like to go a little bit more different and unique. Hence yeah. the Maverick versus Iceman type thing. Yeah, right. we, we have to balance each other. If I go too far crazy, Scott's like, whoa. Yeah. Or if Scott goes too far <laughs> traditional, I'm like, yeah. that's the same old shit. We've had that before. <laughs> that is, that's very, speaking that's of, very speaking true. Of, yeah, it's, which, speaking of which, this is a very nice compromise between Maverick and Iceman. It, it kind it, of falls it, it in is, the middle. It, it does. It falls in the middle. This is like um, uh, Ice Maverick. I don't know how you would do it. You know, <laughs> Just like that. If ice you maverick. go back to four, you're yeah. going to absolutely get that strawberry. And it tastes so good. You oh, it's, it's totally yeah. question number two until you get back into number two. Yeah. It just, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, man. Number two is I, I get all that. It's that it's not like yeah. toffee, smoky. Oh, my God. It's so good. Number yeah, two. And the the yeah. finish on number two goes on for days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 116.24 proof. So, Garrett, what are we looking number at? Number two to me. It's good. Garrett, what are we looking at for uh, for barreling time? Is this going to sit in the barrel much longer? You've uh, you picked it tonight. We're going to we're going to get that barrel ASAP. So oh, um, not, right. it's still currently in the barrel. Uh, it sits in that barrel until somebody uh, gives it a home. Uh, yep. So we'll we'll get we'll get the we'll barrel in bottle in that. We'll so so do you it. have? Uh, I'm curious. What's the age on this one? Yeah, that's a good question. We this uh, turned five years old in uh, in uh, the end of February this year. So this was barreled on uh, February twenty oh, third, two thousand seventeen. Uh, our barrel uh, numbers are never recycled and they're not repeated or reused. So this is the 7,040th uh, barrel of Woodenville whiskey. Um, and yeah, what's unique about this 
if you re if you recognize all the contrast between 70 40 and 70 44 as i mentioned these are sequential so yeah. this is the same distillate yeah. the same thing they were they were aged i think somebody had mentioned that um uh number number 40 was like uh uh just aged more uh 70 40 seemed like it was aged more it was the oldest by two days it was yeah. two days old <laughs> <Two days. laughs> i was gonna i was gonna say i was gonna say this tasted a little more like this tasted like it was like three days older but i missed it by a day so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just barely you were right on it though you were right I'm on it. On oh it. man so I, so I have good. a question for you please last time i saw you uh, a couple months ago we talked about my scoring a barrel head all right can i get this talking about the what we talked about Getting my getting a barrel head from a man cave. What was that? Barrel head. Oh, he wanted know. he wanted to say a barrel head from his man cave. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I wanted yeah, the one from the other side. I've got an Elijah Craig. I need a wooden built barrel head for my <laughs> man cave. We talked about it last time. You said you could all go to <laughs> all easy to do. <laughs> anyway. Technical difficulties. <laughs> no. okay. well, uh, I, I think I, I think I have something no. lined up. Can I? Well, can I get this barrel head? Ooh. Um. So, uh, we will typically send the uh, send the barrel with uh, with the bottles. So uh, we can uh, we can the barrel will exist. The barrel the barrel will come with the purchase. We so. hey uh, Joseph, we want this. We want this barrel. You can't have it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, man. I have a wood shop. <laughs> There you are. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the heads off of it and play frisbee with it. Uh, <laughs> oh, you dog! And I'm, and I'm gonna yeah. make Joseph watch. Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this barrel for grilling. <laughs> so good. Oh man. Well, uh, well, I, I want to thank um, Joseph. I want to thank Blind Squirrel, Michelle, Jimmy M, Rob Zilla, and of course uh, our special guest Garrett Epling from Woodenville for. Uh, for helping us uh, go through these amazing, all four of them were completely different. Just completely. He, Garrett, Garrett said this was uh, just random. He was full of shit. This was this was yep. a setup <laughs> in the in the best way possible. He took us on a journey. Um, thank you so much, Garrett. This was this was amazing, and we got ourselves a, a hitter of a barrel. We can't wait to bring this to everybody. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. My pleasure. I'll Great see you this, this weekend, Garrett. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So with that, uh, thanks to everybody for uh, hanging out. Scott, you want to say anything as we sign off? No, I, I mean everybody to everyone who participated. Garrett, thank you for uh, you know taking a little bit of your time. You know we we love doing these things, and the more we can get the distilleries involved and and our Patreon community. I mean that's what it's all about. It's uh, it's sharing this experience, and we we appreciate everybody and uh, all the support that everybody gives us. So thanks everyone. Wow. All right, guys, thank with you, that, you, if you have not, for watching. If you thank not, you for if, if, us. yes, and if you've not guys. tried anybody out there, if you've not tried Woodenville yet, what the hell are you doing? Go try some Woodenville. <laughs> for no. sure. Oh, hey, hey, don't forget to try all four. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph's blending all four. All right, guys, well, uh, as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's people you share with. Cheers to all the patrons and everyone support the Match and Journey Whiskey Club. We have a great pick coming at you. Cheers. Mm -hmm. We'll see you uh, next time for Cheers. another great pick. Take care, everybody. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers.